Ryan here for Encore. First, I'd like to thank those of you who watched the first build breakdown video, which was for the TRX 4M Beetle. I truly appreciate your support and I hope that we can keep this thing going. For this episode, we will be looking into this SCX24 Hilux, which I built sometime in Feb 2024. You may have seen a video or two of this rig on YouTube or Instagram, but I'll be posting the episode links here and at the end of the video, just in case you want to watch them. Among all the crawlers I have at the moment, this is one of the best performers, if not the best one. This can take on most of the hard lines that my TRX4M builds can take, despite being slightly smaller. After building it for the first time, there were no other changes to this setup other than changing the paint job. I can change things up a little in the future, but there are two parts of this build that I won't change, and they are the chassis and the links. I can change the motor, or the ESC, or the axles, or the wheel set, and it will still be good. But the chassis and the links are what makes this setup great. I'll discuss each one in a separate chapter, plus some other details about this build that you might find useful. The most frequently asked question is where to buy this cantilever suspension. It's from Hard Park RC and it's sold as a chassis actually. You can't buy the cantilever suspension separately because it won't work for any other chassis. This upsets some people but you've got to understand that the rear part of the chassis has been specifically designed for the cantilever system. There are no optional mounting holes, just these two holes where the suspension parts go into. The hole here is for the shocks, and this hole over here is for the bearing that pivots the cantilever. Another frequently asked question is what shocks can work with it. This cantilever suspension was designed to work with stock C10 shocks. When I first assembled it, I tried using stock shocks which were smooth, but they're a bit too soft for me. So instead, I used 32mm Endura shocks on the rear. They're slightly longer than stock, so it made the rear ride height a little higher than the front, which is pretty much how I set up all of my crawlers. Longer and bigger shocks won't work in this setup. Imagine putting these 39mm shocks, it's gonna push back this lever and lift the height too much and also limit the travel. If you use big bore shocks, you won't get the correct angle to make the cantilever work smoothly. Another usual question about this cantilever suspension is, aside from not having to punch holes on a truck bed for the shocks, what else does it do or how does it help achieve better results? To be honest, I didn't know what to expect when I ordered this chassis. I just knew that it's different and that for me was an opportunity to create something differently. I'm not an expert at anything to begin with, but I've used this rig long enough to offer an informed opinion about this. What I think is that Aside from having a lower center of gravity, because the rear part of the chassis is flat, I think it's the way that the shocks interact with the chassis that gives it an edge. In a typical shock assembly, the shocks tend to push the chassis upward when compressing, and that upward force can lift the chassis away from the ground. In this cantilever system, it pushes the chassis forward instead of upward, which helps keep the chassis stay low, and I think there's an advantage in that when climbing or side healing. It's like the chassis gets less disturbance from the activity of the rear axles, regardless of whether it's extending or compressing. Anyway, that's just my observation. Let me know in the comments if you have a better idea, or if what I just said is total nonsense. These links are also from Hard Park RC, and they're called the Mentor V2 links. One thing that's special to these links is that they are in a 150mm wheelbase. They are longer than Seabolt but shorter than Gladiator. 
This one here is in C bolt length and it's called Goblin Links. They both have deadbolt rears but the front links of the Dementor are longer than the seat and fronts which gives it more reach and articulation. These links are attached to a Delrin skid which is really flat and smooth. These skid and links are truly high clearance when they work together. Notice how these rear lower links were bent. The angle and position of the bends are spot on for breaking over hard lines. And you'll see this a lot in the videos of this Hilux. It clears the break over very effectively and that's why I have no plans of replacing these links anytime soon. The front upper links have been inverted for motor clearance. I used a Furitec Venom in there because it's smaller and much smoother than Micro Komodo, but it's still hitting the upper links. The inverted upper links are handling it well so far. I'm planning to replace this motor soon with a Mofo RC Medio, but the motor's gonna hit the dashboard. So if ever, I'll be changing the body as well since this body is due for retirement. If you guys have suggestions for a cab-only replacement for this body, please let me know in the comments. The shocks I used in front are 39mm oil shocks from Injura, and I think they're the perfect length for the Dementor front links. To fit all the electronics within the cab, I had to put the battery on the side tray, while the Lizard Pro here is hanging over the edge of the electronics tray. I wasn't able to put the seats in a driver because of this layout, but that's okay because I was trying to keep this setup as light as possible on top. Being able to fit the electronics on the cab gave it a nice front weight bias. It's 59% in front and 41% at the back, and that's a fairly good weight bias for inclines. It's a little heavier on the right because of the battery, but that's okay. The total weight of this setup is 524 grams with the battery on, which I would consider moderately light for a 150mm wheelbase. These are 57mm J-Concept landmines, outstanding tires, although a little challenging to mount because of the fat beads. It's stuffed with 3D printed inserts. These wheels are DJ crawler wheels and they're 22.8 grams a piece, so no need to add brass rings to it. The axles are Muse isokinetic, crazy steering angle, and I had to dial down the endpoints to prevent the tires from touching the shocks on a full steer. The axles run on 14T differentials for both front and back. It comes with an optional 16T underdrive for the rear axle, but I don't normally use underdrives, so I just kept it as is. I think that's it for this episode. So, what do you guys think about this build? I hope you can watch the videos of this Hilux to see its capability. It might surprise you because it keeps surprising me with what it can do. Anyway, your thoughts are welcome, so please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and keep rocking!